Today we are going to explore locks in Java. Let's try to understand what a lock does using a very simple real life example. Suppose there is an ATM machine and we know that at one time only one person can access ATM machine to withdraw the money. So to make sure that only one person enters the ATM vestibule, there will be one security guard present. That security guard will make sure that at one time maximum of one person should be able to enter the ATM vestibule to withdraw the money. That security guard is doing the same thing what a lock does in Java. So in Java there can be a critical code block that should only be accessed by one thread at a time. And to make sure this rule is followed locks should be used. So what exactly will happen? So any thread which is executing that critical section first will have to acquire the lock and then execute that piece of code. And after executing those lines of code, it should unlock it as well. So that the other threads which are waiting for the lock can acquire it and execute the code. Let us discuss one more real life example to understand this in a transactional manner. Imagine a bank account with a balance of $100. Now two people are accessing the account at the same time. One is depositing $50 and the other one is withdrawing $70. In the perfect world, the final balance should be $80. But in the concurrent programming, both operations could read the balance as 100, perform their operations and write back the result. So the final balance could be incorrectly ended up as $150 or even $30 as well. Now let's try to discuss a couple of scenarios in this case. So suppose uh, in the beginning both the threads have read the value as 100, the current balance and the depositing thread has already uh, performed its operation of depositing and added 50 to 100. So that becomes 150 and it has also updated the value back as 150. But the withdrawing thread which has read the value 100, what it will do, it, it will subtract the $70 from the red value which was 100 and mark the final value as $30 and it will write back the $30 as balance. So here you can see the transaction from the depositor got lost due to this. If we say the withdrawing thread has completed its execution before that, so in that case, first $70 will be subtracted from 100 and 30 will be written. But the depositing thread who has already read the value as 100, it will add the 50 and write back the 150 value. So in both the cases, if you see the data is inconsistent. This type of situation is also known as race condition. So where uh, different threads are racing with each other to update a shared resource. So in situations like this, how locks will be helpful? Locks are the solution to problems like this. They act like a token which is required to access a shared resource. If a thread has a token, it can access the resource. If not, it must wait until the token is available. Locks ensure that only one thread can access a shared resource at a time that prevents the race condition. Using our bank account example, if we use a lock, the deposit operation would acquire the lock, perform the operation and then release the lock. Only then could the withdrawal operation acquire the lock and perform the operation. The final balance would correctly be $80 in that case. Now let's see how the basic lock and unlock structure looks like. Here we have a reference of lock interface which is pointing to the object of a re-entrant lock class which is an implementation of lock interface. So we will discuss different types of lock implementation in our upcoming video as well. There we will discuss the re-entrant lock. Now we know we have a set of lines in the code which are critical and should only be accessed via a single thread at a time. So just before those lines we are locking the access. And once those critical lines are executed, then we are releasing the lock. So, 
So here we are using resource.lock to mark the start of critical section and inside try block we are performing some operation which will be to update a shared resource that acts as a critical section and in the final section we are releasing the lock using resource.unlock so that uh, the other threads which are waiting to acquire the lock they can acquire the lock and execute those critical section critical lines of code can be like updating the balance after the transaction which we have seen in our previous example now in this call we will see what basic functionality is defined in lock interface so we'll discuss the important methods which are available or which are defined inside the lock interface so the first method that we are going to discuss is lock method this method does not return anything this method is used to acquire the lock so what will happen in case the lock is not available and one thread tries to call this lock method so in that case that particular thread will become disabled for thread scheduling purpose and it will stay there until the lock becomes available and it has acquired the lock the second method is lock interruptibly it is almost similar to the lock method with one additional functionality that if some other thread interrupts the current thread and interruption of lock is uh, supported in that case also it will let you acquire the lock and similarly if once the lock is acquired it will immediately return back and in case the lock is not available again the calling thread will be disabled for the thread scheduling purpose and it will lie there dormant next important method is try lock so what lock method does is it's a blocking operation it will stay there until the thread acquires the lock but suppose if we have a requirement like uh, a one thread needs to check if the lock is available then it will acquire it otherwise it will ignore it so in scenarios like that we can make use of try lock method this will acquire the lock only if it is free at the time of invocation so suppose a lock is not currently available and a thread tries to get the lock using try lock method so in that case it will immediately return false if it if it is able to acquire the lock then it will immediately return true if not then it will immediately return false it will not wait there for the lock to become available there is one more variant of this try lock method which expects a couple of arguments one is long time and then what is the unit of the time so suppose in case we do not want to return immediately we want to uh, see if we are able to get the log let's say in 10 seconds so that the thread can wait for 10 seconds and if uh, it is not able to acquire the log only then it will return false so in those scenarios we can use this particular variant of try lock then we have another method which is unlock so as its name suggests this particular method will unlock the resource so whatever lock a thread has already acquired that lock will be released so these were a few important methods which are defined inside the lock interface now in our next session we will cover the different type of implementations for the lock interface that includes reentrant lock read write lock etc so in case if you have any doubt in this video please do let me know in the comment section and if you find this video useful please like share and subscribe thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video till then keep learning